you want to complete your profile, complete your summary section. It is your bio. It's selling you and you're in charge of it. So put three lines here, which make someone say, show more. Because that's the key. If nobody puts show more here, if you don't click on it and nobody clicks on that, you failed. So entice people up here. Don't put something really, really boring, something standard. Put something that's really, really interesting, like I'm the only CEO of the Mohawk, or something interesting, challenging, that make people go, I want to see more about this, I want to find out more. It have you, so you're building up your story and change it all the time. Tell stories and add videos. Videos are phenomenal on LinkedIn. You can watch a video on LinkedIn itself. You don't need to use YouTube, you can watch it on the app and the laptop, so think about doing that. And then think about filling out your experience section. So we have a rule of black marketing in that every single person who joins has to copy and paste the company page and put it into the experience so it's consistent. Because if you don't put that rule in, you'll get a thousand different versions of what your company does. And normally they start with, I do this at this company. And it won't actually tell you what the company does. Because people think it's internal and not external, and actually it's external. Because people are Googling, people are finding these things out. So put in what your company does from your company page. And make sure all your team do the same thing. So you have brand consistency. And then add in things like YouTube channel, for example. Have a link to your YouTube channel. Very simple, have a link to your website. So many people don't do this. This is basically a driver to your website and your YouTube channel. But only if you put links in. Make sure people go there. Very, very simply done, just go to the experience section and upload and put a link in, simple as that. And visually it looks so much more attractive, you have a link here than nothing at all. So put it in and then tell people what else you do. So in Singapore you could do lots of other things, I mean the people who are in charge of the prime time here can put about them being in charge of prime time. So for example, I lecture at NUS, so I put the fact I lecture at NUS on my LinkedIn. I am a contributor to the business time, so I put that on my LinkedIn. I'm also an SMU mentor, so I put that on my LinkedIn. This is all part of my personal brand. You all do the same thing. There are many, many people here who do other things. Particularly the, the, the volunteers for prime time. Put it on here, tell a story about why you're doing it, how you're contributing, how you're adding back, and you're giving back to people. Put it on your LinkedIn, so you don't it. No one will know you're doing it. So you have to self-promote, yes. Yes. So that actually I'm wondering for people who, for whatever reason, have changed any jobs, mm. you know, should they therefore put down only their current job? No, all the jobs, all the jobs. Everything? Every single thing, because it's all part of SEO. More the more on LinkedIn, because it's all part of SEO, and people can look down your credibility, look down your experience, what you've done, and they can also add recommendations into those jobs as well. If you take away the job, they can't recommend you for that job. Mm. Is there that some people might see it as, oh wow, this person is not reliable because you know every year this person is switching. Well, you know, it's, it's a cost to us as a company to hire someone like they're just gonna exit in twelve months. That's just called Singapore, surely. <laughs> that's that's not the advice I was given changing two years and Singapore was going don't put the past experience, leave it. No, it looks, it looks much worse. If you miss out things from your experience, it looks much, much worse. Because people are going to see there's a gap in your CV. People are going to see there's a gap on your LinkedIn saying, well, okay, where were you for those two years? Where were you for those three years? If you put down the fact that maybe you took a career break, maybe you had children that stayed at home, maybe you did something else, maybe you helped out your sick mother, whatever it happens to be, you put that down there so that people aren't left with the negative thought of why was that, what happened there? Was she fired and couldn't get a job? You know, for people tend to look more negatively if things are missing than positive. You've got to control the agenda, and by doing that, you put the information there. The downside of putting the information there, so what, you change jobs. In my, in my 20s, I change jobs all the time because I want to be an entrepreneur and learn about the different industries. And basically, people will see that as a benefit. I employ people based on the fact they've had lots of jobs and lots of experience because it gives them more credibility when it talks to my hundreds of um, like clients across the whole world who are in different industries. They're just in one job the whole time. It kind of limits their experience unless they've moved country, for example. 
So no, the more the better, because it's your story. Tell your story in a positive way. Don't be ashamed of your past, which is what that says. If you hide it or you limit it, it's, it's kind of suggesting you don't basically ashamed of it. I even put in my first job when I was 16, working for HMV when I was still at school. Because that actually shows that I basically started a job when I was still studying. And I like that. I employ people who do that here. I encourage, I, when I do SMU stuff, I encourage them to put their interns on here and get more internships because it makes them stand out. So no, I'd say be bold and go for it rather than hide it. Yeah. Yeah. So for those of us who are actually employees, hmm. you know, we work for someone else, what, what, what's an appropriate background picture? Is it something that you enjoy and that you do well, a hobby or a... It has to be about you. It's about personal brands. And what I would say is don't put a picture of Singapore on. Because like a million other people have got a picture of Singapore or in Sydney in the, like the picture of the Harbour Bridge and everyone thinks they're unique. It's like, it's not unique, it's a tourism advert. It's basically not about you. It has to be about you. So what I would say is pick something that's personal about you that actually makes out that you're about your personal brand. And it can be personal, personal, as long as you can tell a story because people will ask you about it. And it can be a good conversation starter. So I'd say just pick something that actually resonates with you. I tend to pick things out that are more that, that have a personal but professional angle to it too. Because I know that's in that kind of context that people look at. It's LinkedIn, not Facebook. And that's the other thing you've got to think about. Don't use the same background you use on Facebook on LinkedIn. These are two different platforms. You know, put, don't put your family, for example, on LinkedIn. You can put them on your Facebook and you know, vice versa. Your work colleagues can be on your LinkedIn but not on Facebook. So you could do that. Can I ask a question? Yes, of course. Oh, you can always make it compatible. You can always basically use Photoshop and just edit it and put something on and put it smaller or put it larger. You can always put something with it. Uh, yeah, they basically put a guidance. Sorry, Canva. Yeah. <laughs> Play with it. Yeah. We have a, a WhatsApp chat and we talk about this stuff. If it would be of help to people, then I will find that link and I'll put it in the group chat. So it basically tells you the, um, the specifications you have to put in into LinkedIn. So it basically gives you those specifications. So it's very good. So recommendations are really, really key. So recommendations are even more important these days of social selling because it's not just you saying what you've done, it's other people saying you've done it too. So they're phenomenally important. We get asked all the time, you know, can you give recommendations, give recommendations? And it's harder for us because we never ever reveal our clients. Because for the obvious reason that my team are managing people's profiles, you have to believe that you're talking to that person and not my team. So we can never reveal our clients, but our clients often talk about us in recommendations. So in your job, whatever it happens to be, or your career or your, your company, get other people to recommend you and get other people to talk about what you've done, the great job you've done. Because when it comes to that career and then getting a new job or changing country, um, or even just getting investment or winning employees, actually they will look at your recommendations. They will look at what other people have said about working for you, working with you, what you deliver. So it's really, really, really important. It is the whole TripAdvisor, you know, you go to TripAdvisor to look at what other people think about that restaurant. You ask your friend about the best restaurant in a certain city. It's all about social affirmation and LinkedIn is very much about that as well. But also put in things like, for example, your skills. Think about the 50 skills you want to be known for and then the three at the top that get seen because again, it's part of your personal branding. People look at it on your LinkedIn and they get a part of it as part of your personal branding. It's part of adding to it. Same thing with things like your awards. And if you get, for example, endorsed, you know, because I've been endorsed, for example, by David who works at Microsoft and four people who work at LinkedIn for social selling. That's even better. You can be endorsed for people by people who actually do the same thing, and that's fantastic. So try and get people to endorse you for your greatest skills. And then think about your awards. Put your awards on there. Put the organizations you work for. Put your uh, organizations, your publications on there as well. Fill out your LinkedIn. And then tell people where you are. You know, a lot of people in Asia travel. You know, so when I go to Sydney, for example, I put in the fact, the big patch in the background, say, I'm in Sydney. And the background here is live in Sydney. Same thing with Auckland. Put in the background picture and then change the headline, live in Auckland Global Speaker Summit. When I'm in Hong Kong, for example, put in the fact that you've got the three dates in Hong Kong, live in Hong Kong, live in Hong Kong. And even put it in the summary in the experience section so you people know I'm in Hong Kong. Because they will then know that. Because don't forget, your headline follows you around. 
So then people come up to me and go, oh, you're in Hong Kong, Chris, fantastic, can we meet up? How else do they know you're in Hong Kong if you don't actually tell them somewhere? And this is one way of telling them. Even having, for example, infographics, telling people you're there, like a marketing campaign, an advertising campaign, letting people know you're there. I love the way Landy does this, a little plane saying next dot Greece, and she changes it every single country. It's fantastic. Steve Dawson had it up here, London 7-9 September, Liverpool 10-12 September. And Ron does this fantastic thing. So Ron always travels around the world. Actually brilliant. So he's got Sacramento, next stop San Diego. And then he's got up here a keynote speech at Leadership Workshop. So you know where he's going to be. Everyone in the world knows where Ron is going to be. And when Ron's at home, he says he's at home. This is brilliant, because he's never at home. So if people want to find out when Ron is here, they basically can look on here and say, oh, Ron's in Singapore. So he's got now Singapore, next stop Malaysia. Brilliant. So if you're traveling, do this. It really does help in terms of generating meetings and engagement where you're going to be. So don't do this. A lifelong passion for problem solving. That means nothing. It's gobbledygook. It basically, there's no personalization there whatsoever. It applies to all of you. It applies to everybody. Well, this, business leader, what does that mean? Nothing. Absolutely zero. You're business leaders. I'm business leader. Everyone's a business leader. It means nothing. But this is, the, uh, this is the Love Doctor's summary. So I love, love Doctor's a, a, a business. So the Love Doctor, convince parents for a love marriage. Affair, other person. It's like, how do you have an affair by yourself? I'm not really sure I'm getting that one. But I like the fact he does things like get your lover back. Divorce problem. But then he goes beyond love into different niche areas like business problem, study problem. So he's a Love Doctor solving your study problems. My favorite service he offers. Very niche service. Be free from enemy forward slash second wife. It's a very niche service, that second wife disappearance service. So what happened to the first wife? Sorry there. And Peter here is out of work. So LinkedIn tell me that Peter is celebrating a work anniversary. Four years at out of work. Not only that, they say congratulations Peter for being out of work for four years. Can you imagine how many people just went click, click, click? That's why he doesn't look very happy. And don't do this. Don't be endorsed for PowerPoints, Excel, and telling the time. You get no prizes for being able to tell the time. And if you're English or Asian, don't be endorsed for awesomeness or general awesomeness. If you're American, you can, of course, be endorsed for this. This was an English guy, and his friends have clearly made this up and started endorsing him, whether he likes it or not. Listen, I'm not an awesome at all. I'm in real estate. I'm English. We're not awesome at all. We're not English people. But your SEOs, yes, go on. Uh, on endorsements. Yes. How do you, you know, how do you get people to endorse you, regardless of if they are? Ask them. Like, um, Well, that depends on your, your moral compass, I think. So you can, do, you can do a quid pro quo, a bit like recommendations. You can do quid pro quo on recommendations as well. It only deletes the value if somebody knows you've done it. He says cynically. Because someone's going to your profile, not going to their profile. They're looking at your recommendations. If the recommendation endorsement is genuine, and recommendations, don't forget, are quite hard to make, actually fake. You actually have to say to someone was good at doing this, and people can actually check whether you know this person, how this person is. It's not like, you know, you, endorsements are a bit flimsy. I don't really like endorsements myself, but you have to play the LinkedIn game. Recommendations are much more personal. So recommendations, you can recommend somebody else, but I would never recommend anybody else I didn't actually feel could do that job. So that's the important thing. You've got to rec only recommend people you actually admire, or you've learned something from, or you, you know, you basically, there's some kind of benefit from doing so. Question, yeah. On that note, I just recently had somebody that um, LinkedIn said, See, it's, it's an interesting question, and I tell you, I've changed my mind on this. A year ago, I'd agree with you, 
But I found, because we experimented with exactly this, that it started generating business. Right. Happy birthday, congratulations. And by the way, we do this service. Because people did this, precisely, I felt that a year ago, but then my team said, let's just try it, and we started getting results. And I was like, oh shit, we're starting getting results by something I told people not to do a year ago. We better start. No, I found it annoying. Yeah. I found it like. It's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. Yeah. But it depends how you use your LinkedIn. Me and my team, and don't forget there's five people on my LinkedIn use it for lead generation. I generate leads for my entire company. So if you're using it for that, you use all the engagements. So work anniversaries, you know, new jobs, happy birthdays, uh, congratulations, uh, their blogs, their whatever it happens to be, you're using it to get engagement, to get the brand out, to basically tap in somebody. And what we found was that Sales Navigator and the in-mails were failing, were going down when it comes to engagement, but actually in terms of people responding, because so many people were spamming people, people were ignoring them, but people started saying yes to happy birthday and anniversaries. And against my, my first instinct, we, start, we continued to do it because it started getting results. And we measure the results. And literally, if I told you that 13% of my leads last week came from happy birthday and anniversaries, and 13% came from Sales Navigator, you will see why we have to continue doing the anniversaries because it's matching what the premium social selling function of LinkedIn is supposed to generate. So you have to go with that. It's a bit like um, on LinkedIn, you used to be able to do long form posts. And then LinkedIn decided they didn't like long form posts anymore, so they relegated them. And now no one does long form posts because you can't get any engagement because they stopped promoting it. And they start promoting short form posts and videos. So you have to go with where LinkedIn's algorithm and where LinkedIn's people are actually responding and engaging. That's what I mean, it's a professional network, it's a business network, and sometimes you have to push it to areas you don't necessarily want to do with. But it's a fine, it is a fine line.